Just for me to introduce the speaker, this is Mohammed Abisi, who will talk about relations to the quantum ball effect, I guess. Yeah. If you'd like. <laughs> okay, thanks, Andrew, for the introduction. Uh, there is an error on this slide, and uh, that's June. It's already July. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I will be uh, telling you a little bit about the uh, kind of feedback over here. But the work that uh, we have been doing at uh, the Joint Quantum Institute in the past few uh, in the past few years. So uh, the bulk part of the talk will be about uh, measuring topological invariance in, in photonic systems. But before I start, I would like to uh, tell you a little bit of of, of background. Um, so the the talk will be mostly about topological effects in, in photonic systems. So topological effects mostly are introduced in electronic systems, and we want to translate some of these uh, phenomena and effects um, into photonic systems. And once we do that, uh, when we're translating some of these models from photonics, uh, from electronic to photonic systems, we have to be careful. Some of these orders uh, do not actually exist in bosonic systems. Some new physics are expected in photonic systems, in particular, um, since uh, photons are bosons, electrons are fermions, the types of orders uh, is different. Measurement and preparation of these kind of states uh, is very different than electronic systems. So we will get that to we'll get to that in the talk. Um, so one of the motivations, for example, uh, fundamental motivations, is that whether uh, we can uh, uh, see some of the uh, predictions uh, that people have in, in quantum Hall effect, in particular, can we see fractional statistics uh, in, in a photonic system if we uh, manage to implement quantum Hall models in photonic systems. And then once we understand them, then we might be able to uh, find some applications out of this. For example, topological states are, uh, uh, are uh, advertised as being very robust and, and useful, so can we actually make some useful devices uh, out of this uh, uh, robust physics. Okay, so uh, the outline of the talk is the following. I will uh, tell you uh, how we can synthesize gauge field uh, to make uh, the hallmark example of topological states, which is basically quantum Hall physics. Then I will uh, tell you how we can uh, image these topological states uh, in in silicon photonics, and then the main part will be how we can measure the topological invariance related. Uh, uh, to those states in, in photonic systems. So this, this part of the talk, this three part, is completely non-interacting physics. Uh, then uh, uh, we go to the strongly interacting physics, what kind of uh, interesting physics we expect when we add strong interaction. Okay, so I think this is the right audience of uh, visible and, and telecom photons and also circuit QD uh, uh, community where we can think a little bit how we can uh, manage uh, to implement strong photon-photon interaction to achieve uh, uh, many-body uh, physics. Uh, so, I don't know whether I have a background noise, but okay. Um, and then, what kind of Hamiltonian actually we can implement, and how we can we can prepare them. Okay. So, uh, uh, in order to start, I, I'll just review integer quantum Hall effect in in one, one slide. So in a Jupiter quantum Hall effect, we have a two-dimensional electron gas. We have a magnetic field perpendicular to this, and we look at the transverse conductance or transverse resistance. And what we see is that resistance, as Hall resistance, as a function of magnetic field, has these plateaus. And these plateaus are very robust, meaning that the lo location depends only on some fundamental constant, h, uh, Planck's constant e squared, and n being a, a, an integer. Okay. So what is surprising, what was surprising for, for people was that uh, these uh, states and these plateaus are robust. So even if we change the sample, if we have extra impurity, less impurity, if the temperature fluctuates a little bit, these, these uh, uh, plateaus uh, are robust and their location does not depend on any uh, physical uh, 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 parameter rather than, than, uh, than these parameters. And that's why people actually have been using this uh, as a standard for, for conductance. So uh, our goal uh, uh, in the first part will be uh, to, to see whether we can see similar effects uh, for photons. Um, uh, in, in particular, can we uh, have uh, a situation where photons feel a transverse magnetic field and then uh, exhibit some, some robust behavior? So 
What we know is that if we put a magnetic field, if we put a very, very strong magnetic field, photons will couple to the magnetic field due to the magneto-optical effect, but this is very, very uh, weak, uh, especially in the visible domain. Uh, so what we have to do, we have to synthesize, basically. Uh, we have to synthesize magnetic field for, for photons such that uh, we see uh, such effect. Okay. So let, let's go back. Uh, what we really need is the following. Let's assume that we have a two-dimensional array of ring resonators coupled to each other. And then the presence of magnetic field for these photons uh, boils down to one, one simple uh, criteria. And that is, uh, if a photon hops around a plaquette like this, like this is a square lattice, so it, it goes around this square lattice, uh, a square plaquette, it should acquire a, a non-zero phase. If it goes in the opposite direction, it should acquire the negative phase. Okay? So if we manage to have this uh, non-symmetric phase, which when we go this way, we acquire one phase, the opposite, uh, opposite way, acquire the negative phase, then uh, we, have an effectively, uh, we, ha we have an effective magnetic field, very similar to an electron going around the magnetic flux and, and acquiring a hard of both phase. Okay? So more formally, uh, we should have a Hamiltonian of this type. So uh, when I'm hopping, so these are the upper creation and annihilation operators of photons in, in different sites, x, x, y, and x uh, plus 1, y. Um, so in one direction, we can assume that they don't acquire any phase, but in this direction, they, they should acquire a phase, and that phase should increase as a function of the row number, such that when they form a full loop, they acquire a non-zero phase. If we go the opposite way, they acquire a non-zero So this is just a formal way of writing, writing this. So what, what uh, it turned out that, that there is actually a very easy way uh, to implement this. Let's focus on the two resonator case. We are coupling two resonators uh, to each other. The, each, their length is uh, m, m, an integer. Lambda is the resonant wavelength that we would like the system to be resonant at. We couple them with another waveguide or a resonator, which is detuned from these two resonators exactly uh, 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 to be anti-resonant with these two in particular the length of the middle resonator should be m lambda plus lambda over 2, such that when a photon starts circulating around uh, this, uh, this mode, this way, um, and when it, uh, when it wants to hop uh, to the other resonator, it should go through the middle resonator. But then since the total length of this resonator is anti-resonant at that frequency, it will not uh, um, close its path. Instead, it will just hop directly to this resonator. And it, when it, when it goes to this resonator, when it wants to go back, it will take just a lower path, and it will not interfere with itself many times. So the forward and the pa backward uh, 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 processes take different optical paths. Uh, and if we uh, put this resonator in an asymmetric way, the way that actually we have it on this slide, then the, then the top one will travel more than the bottom one. So if I write it in the, in the quantized form, it will take this, this form. In particular, when we hop from left to right, we will take some phase. And when we hop from right to left, we will take uh, the, the opposite phase. Okay? So by hermeticity, uh, by hermeticity of the Hamiltonian, this, this phase and this phase should be equal and exactly opposite to each other. And, uh, and that does not, that's not surprising because these two phases are not actually unrelated. The total length of the resonator, we set it to be uh, m lambda plus lambda over two. Okay. So uh, once once we uh, once we do do this, then we can actually change this alpha and then implement this Hamiltonian. And uh, this Hamiltonian is very well known. It's a single electron on a on a square lattice with a magnetic field. The the spectrum is known to be Hofstadter butterfly. So that's the Hofstadter butterfly. Uh, this is alpha that characterizes the strength of the magnetic field, which goes from 0 to 1, which, which is basically the phase goes from 0 to 2 pi in each plaquette, and this is the energy uh, of those eigenstates. So this is a simulation for a 10 by 10 uh, lattice on a torus. Okay? So we have these magnetic bands, and it mimics the effect of a, an infinite lattice. Now, if we put the lattice not on a torus, but on a, just on a, on, on, a, on a disk geometry, then it has edges. And we see that some, some states appear in between these, uh, these bands. And, and if you look at the probability density current, we see that these edge states travel in the forward and backward direction. In particular, if I look at these states, they will go, they're chiral, they're confined around the edge of the system, they go like this. And if I look at these states, they go in the opposite direction. Okay? 
So the consequence of that is the following. If I add an impurity, if I detune one of these resonators when this photon is, is traveling forward, then uh, it would like to backscatter in the backward direction. But then since the backward going state has a different energy, the scattering is reduced, uh, is inhibited. Instead, uh, the photon should go around, uh, uh, should, should go around uh, and, and, uh, and wrapped around the impurity. Okay? So that, that's, the, that's basically the, uh, the idea how we can synthesize the gauge field. Uh, and the experiment that we did was, uh, was the following. We used the silicon and insulator technology. So basically, these rings are, are made of uh, silicon and silicon dioxide. Uh, the typical numbers are, are given here. And if you look at it, at a, um, this is SEM image. So these are ring resonators. These are the main rings, and these are the link rings. And they're, they're different by lambda over 2. Lambda over 2 here is, uh, is 1.5 micron, the telecom uh, frequency divided by 2. And the scale is 30 micron, so we don't actually see the difference. But there is a difference. Uh, we, we checked it uh, by S in the SEM image. Actually, you can see that they're, they're off. So uh, um, one uh, important point here is that these resonators are not perfect, so they're leaky. The photons can leak out of the system, and actually that's a good thing. Why? Because we can put a camera, and uh, uh, if we hope that the, the scattering rate out of these resonators is uniform, we can basically image uh, uh, the state. Not, I'm not talking about the tomography. I'm just uh, lo looking at the uh, wave function amplitude uh, on, on each side. Okay. So what should we expect is the following, is that we have, again, uh, our spectrum. If we send the photon at this frequency, it should go, it should couple to the bulk state. If I send the photon at this frequency, it should couple to the edge states and also the edge states here. Some of them, they go clockwise around the system. Some of them, they go counterclockwise around the system. And I apologize for the, uh, for the resolution. We couldn't do the uh, HDMI. So this is, again, a SEM image, but it's, it's cleaner than it appears. So the photon comes here. So this is, uh, this is here. The input is here. The output is here. The photon comes here. It can go either to this edge or to that edge. For this one, we are, uh, we are coupling it uh, to this edge. So it will go around. It will couple here, and it will come out. That's, that's uh, what we expect from the experiment. Uh, that's, that's what we expect from simulation, and that's the experiment. In the experiment, we see that the edge is a little bit thicker than the simulation because we have impurity in the experimental realization, while in the simulation, uh, this was done for a pure system. Okay. Then uh, we can also uh, send a photon at this, uh, uh, at this frequency, which is resonant with the edge states that are going in the opposite direction. And then that's what we expect from the simulation, and that's what we expect, uh, that's what we see in the experiment. Uh, there are a couple of points that are important here. Um, uh, it, this is like a resonator, okay? So if you're in the critically coupled regime, we get in and we get out. Uh, if we are in the undercoupled or overcoupled, then, the, then uh, instead of seeing just one uh, round, we should see many rounds in the system and then come out. So uh, intentionally, we want it to be the, in this critically coupled regime such that they just go one around, once around the system. Uh, another point is that these uh, states are not uniform, but uh, in a thermodynamic limit, they should be uniform. The fact that they are not uniform is because of the finite size effect, as you can see even in the, in the simulation. Okay. So then uh, further, if you remove actually one of these resonators, then uh, the, the photon, uh, as we expect, is not going to backscatter in the backward direction. It will route around and then uh, continues its way. That, that's what we see over here. As well. okay. So one can actually be more uh, 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 um, quantitative. That was only the imaging. And we can repeat the experiment for many samples. So this is transmission as a function of frequency. This is the delay time, the time that it takes for the photon to go from one side of the system to the other side, so the Wigner delay time. And then uh, it superimpose all, uh, all the spectra on top of each other. We see that when the photon goes through the edge state, uh, the transmission and the delay time uh, uh, um, do not change dramatically from, uh, from, uh, from shot to shot. But uh, in the bulk state, uh, they change. Uh, 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 quite significantly. Okay, so that that's a, a, a quantitative way to 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 see uh, that these edge states are actually uh, robust in a similar fashion that uh, integer quantum Hall uh, states are. Uh, 
that's right, different samples. Uh, on, on different chips, it's not on the same device. Uh, then, then we can also benchmark it with the, with the one-dimensional system. So let's assume that we have just a one-dimensional ring of resonators or two-dimensional uh, uh, sample as, as we described. And if we look at the transmission as a function of uh, number of resonators, we see that both transmission uh, decrease uh, uh, um, exponentially as the, as the system size. That's not surprising because we have loss. Uh, but we see that uh, the 1D system uh, the transmission goes down more rapidly than the 2D system, and, uh, uh, and we believe that the discrepancy is just due to the fact that in the 1D system, the system is more prone to disorder, while uh, the 2D system is more robust against disorder. So uh, just, uh, just to wrap up uh, this, uh, more, more technical uh, comments is that we have three types of disorder inside the system. One, which leads to uh, decay, the photon leaves out of the system. Uh, the second one is, uh, is the is, um, frequency mismatch, that these resonators are not exactly the same, they have some frequency mismatch. And the third one is the impurities that lead to mode coupling, that couple the, uh, the, the uh, clockwise photon to counterclockwise photons. We are not robust against the, the first one and the third one, we are only robust against the second one, the second one being the inhomogeneity in the frequency. Okay. Uh, and uh, we are not actually the only group uh, interested in. Uh, fortunately, there is a huge uh, interest in the community, uh, in actually different communities, to, to implement these ideas uh, from uh, metamaterial uh, to helical waveguides, and uh, um, uh, more recently in, in, in microwave domain, just uh, uh, using uh, PCB, basically. So. Um, I would like to, uh, if, uh, if you have actually any question, I would take questions for the first part and then I move on, yeah. So, um, if you don't since, mind. Since it's sort of going round and round, mm -hmm. can we think of it as a whispering gallery mode? Well, whispering gallery mode would be like, for example, for a disk. But uh, these are the solutions of the Maxwell's equation, yeah. So this is a mode that propagates around, around the edge of the system. So you can think of it, if, if you believe me that this is like a magnetic field, then uh, the interaction is like minus L dot B, okay? So uh, if B is in this direction, then uh, for a positive L, my energy is negative. For a negative L, the energy is positive, okay? So that's why they have exactly the same, the, the same energy with opposite signs. The, 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 the long edge one and the short edge one, the clockwise going one. Ah, that's the tricky, tricky thing. So Hofstadter is for an infinite system. And as I said, it can be simulated for a, a, a torus. So we have to actually make a torus. Uh, it is not inconceivable because these are photonic systems and we can think that uh, we can uh, couple this side of the sample to the other side of the sample with just the fiber. It's just a question of uh, the efficiency. Exactly. Exactly. Well, uh, that's that's you have to wait even more. <laughs> so up to here, it's all Maxwell's equation. We are dealing with robust modes of Maxwell's equation. Basically. So uh, the the immediate question, even up to here, is that uh, we in the integer quantum Hall effect, there are some integers. So what are those integers in this photonic system? And, and more generally, how uh, that would extend into the fractional quantum hall. Okay? So how we can measure this topological invariance? As I said, there are these integers in the conductance, how they manifest themselves in this, uh, uh, in this photonic system. So we go back to Laughlin's argument. What he argued was that if you have a, uh, if you have a, a Corbino uh, geometry, if you have an analyst, uh, so the magnetic field is uh, perpendicular to this surface, then if we put a magnetic flux, and then we change this flux from 0 to 2 pi, then uh, something interesting happens. In particular, if I look at uh, the energy spectrum of the system, so this is energy, uh, this is uh, the momentum uh, uh, of the states. In particular, uh, the, I can define uh, these, these states are well-defined, they have well-defined momentum at the edge. So we have some edge states that go around here, 
and we have some edge states that go around here. So now, if we change the phi from 0 to 2 pi, the spectrum at 0 and the spectrum at 2 pi should be exactly the same. Okay? Because it's just the same phase. However, when we are changing this phase, uh, 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 the energy uh, uh, of these edge states will change. Because uh, uh, you, you have, you're putting actually a, a coupling a, a, a gauge field uh, to this propagating uh, uh, photon. So uh, what we see here, these are the red, uh, red states and these are the blue, blue states. Uh, no pun intended. Uh, <laughs> so then, uh, uh, then uh, the, the, some of these states actually go down, some of these states go up, but after the 2 pi, they will, will, they will come back to the same position. So in, in an electronic system, we have the chemical potential at, at some level, let's say, say here. Uh, so, uh, one, I inject an electron, it will go here, but then when I change uh, the change uh, phi from 0 to 2 pi, this electron will, uh, will go into the bulk and will appear at the edge states by exactly one, because this moves by one into the, um, into the states below, all the states below are filled, and then one states go up uh, and, and get out of the, the wire from here. So that's why uh, the, the quantum Hall effect is, is, is quantized. So here we had only one, one at the states, uh, but then we have to sum over all the states that are beneath. So in integer quantum Hall, it depends how many states we had before. So if we had n, then uh, the conductance will be n. Okay? So the manifestation of this photophotonic system would be that if we now look at the transmission, as a function of frequency for, uh, for these blue states, for the edge states that are uh, at, the, at the rim of the system, then we should uh, see this, uh, this, the flow of these states. In particular, if I look at the transmission as a function of frequency for the outer edge states, uh, then we see that these states move forward or move backward uh, 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 when we change this phi. In particular, they should just replace themselves by one. So now, if I had one edge states in, in this band, uh, they will move by one. If I had two edge states, they will move by two, three, by three, etc. So the integerness will just boils down to interference patterns. And again, it's, a, it's, a, it's Maxwell's equation and, and wave interference, so that should not be surprising. Okay? So now, uh, what I would like to do, I would like to actually introduce a, an approach um, that would be a bit more general because so far we treated, uh, uh, we, we looked at the edge states and uh, uh, we talked about the topological properties of the system. I did not really specify, uh, uh, but we know that uh, there, there is a bulk edge correspondence in, in these systems, meaning that uh, the winding number, the number of edge states that we have around, around the system are related to the topological invariance that we have in the bulk of the system. And there is a very neat uh, 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 a formalism to, to highlight this. And we would like to uh, use actually that formalism for this reason. And the secondly, uh, that formalism is actually easily uh, uh, extendable to the strongly interacting limit, which I will present in the next, uh, in the next part. Okay? So what's this formalism? This is actually uh, uh, Chern-Simon uh, 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 field theory formalism. So, if, uh, if we want to have an effective field theory with gauge invariance, so this is the gauge invariance, in, in 3 plus 1D, uh, we have Maxwell's equation. Basically, if we didn't know anything about, uh, about universe and we just wanted to uh, make sure that the gauge invariance is satisfied, then we end up with Maxwell's Lagrangian. In particular, we, have, we should have a Lagrangian of this form that F mu nu is, is given by this, and then uh, if I just want to satisfy this gauge, gauge invariance, then that's the, that's the first trivial uh, Lagrangian that I can write. The, the next term, for example, can be uh, uh, the, the fourth order of f, but uh, the, the, the easiest one is this. Okay? So if we vary this, uh, this Lagrangian, we get, we get to Maxwell's equation, and that's, that's what we have over here. But in, it's, it's surprising that in 2 plus 1d, we have actually more freedom. Not only we can have that, but also we can have Chern-Simon uh, we can have a, a form which is which is given uh, uh, here, and this is um, uh, uh, so it's actually quadratic in A, and uh, it's a, again gauge invariant. And we can again look at the with the coupling to some charge. We can vary the the, 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 the Lagrangian, and then look at the equation of motion. If we write it in a in a better way, meaning that if we write it uh, if we write the different components, we will end up with these two equations that are actually very familiar. So 
this is the, uh, the density of the particles, this is the magnetic field, the K uh, being uh, just a, an integer, and, and, and J and E are the, the current and the electric field. So this one, uh, if, if we write it in 2D, is basically the feeling factor. It fixed the feeling factor, the ratio between the particles, well, the particles and the magnetic field. Uh, I took some questions. Okay, yeah. Uh, so, um, um, so this is uh, this is basically fixed the uh, the feeling factor in quantum Hall, and then this relates the uh, the current to the electric field in the transverse direction. So another way to write it is that this is sigma x y e squared uh, over h, and then this k appears here. So if I forget about my normal QED and I just assume that uh, my electrons are coupled uh, to this uh, uh, to this field theory. Then we, uh, then this effective field theory can describe my quantum Hall effect. So I don't need to know about the microscopics of the system. If I believe uh, 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 this effective field theory, then that can describe the topological property of the system. Okay. So what is interesting about uh, these two uh, 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 um, Lagrangians? They are uh, they're gauge invariant uh, in the entire system. But if I put them in a finite system then this is gauge invariant because this is gauge invariant at any point, but this is not gauge invariant. In particular, it has some uh, uh, boundary term, very similar to like the pointing theorem that we do and we, have, we end up with some boundary term. This also, when we do this transformation, we end up with some boundary gain. So in order to, uh, 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 to recover the gauge uh, 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 invariance, we have to couple uh, the bulk to some edge. In particular, we have to couple it to some Lagrangian of this type. Uh, this uh, is, uh, it describes actually a field that is propagating uh, with, uh, with velocity v uh, with a linear dispersion, okay? uh, apart from, this, this, apart from this, this term. This is just a, a free, free propagating wave. But then if I choose that this field is coupled in this specific way to A, then the whole system becomes gauge invariant. So, uh, this uh, field theory that describes the topological property of the bulk it, it requires that there should be some edge states uh, around the system such that the whole system becomes gauge invariant. So the gauge invariance enforces a relationship between bulk and edge. So the, then the Lagrangian of the chern simon plus the edge is gauge invariant, but separately they're not. They're not. So that's actually a manifestation of bulk edge correspondence. Okay. So now, if I can manipulate this edge, then I might be able to, uh, uh, to, to measure this topological invariance and then uh, say something about the bulk, because I know the bulk and edge are related to each other. So that's what we do. We have a system, and we have the bulk. We assume that the bulk is not here. We just uh, look, at the, uh, look at the edge of the system, and we couple the gauge field to it. And then, uh, not surprisingly, this should be ga gauge anomalous. Uh, because we said that the edge by itself is, is not gauge invariant. So what's the manifestation of this gauge anomaly? It's something very simple, similar to the Laughlin's argument. If I look at the energy state of the system, let's assume that this is finite, so it will develop um, some eigenstates. If it's a linear dispersion or just some eigenmodes, then, uh, then I have some states. We can uh, index them with momentum. Then when I change phi from 0 to 2 pi, in, an, in a gauge invariant system, the states should come back to themselves. In a gauge uh, uh, non-invariant system, these states will flow. Basically, if I change, from, uh, if I change uh, phi from 0 to 2 pi, this guy comes here, this guy comes here, they, they flow by 1 or they flow by 2, depending on, the, on that k that we introduce in the chern simon uh, Lagrangian. So uh, this anomalous behavior that when we gauge a system and then the spectrum flows either to the plus infinity or, or minus infinity, is, is this chiral anomaly. And the number of states that it moved is just uh, 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 measures the topological uh, invariance, okay? So that's what we, we are, well, that's what we do in the experiment. So in the experiment, what we do is that we take our system, we heat uh, the edge uh, of the system, uh, such that uh, when the photon is hopping around the rim of the system, it will acquire an extra phase, and that would be uh, our effective uh, gauge field that we would like to couple to the edge of the system. Okay, so um, so that, then that that's accomplished by just putting some he heaters 
uh, on the ring resonators that we had in the in the first part. So uh, these are the ring resonators, and they're heated, so that 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 phase is is imprinted. So uh, what we expect is the is the following: that if we look at the transmission as a function of frequency, uh, then when we change this phi from zero to two pi, then this interference pattern should move either to the left or right, and the then the state should come back to themselves. So the uh, the the red and and uh, and blue are for zero and, and one uh, magnetic flux. So this is the simulation. This is uh, the measurement. So this is a better way to look at it. So this is phi when we are changing phi. This is uh, frequency and the contrast is, is transmission. So we see some states move in this direction and some states move in the opposite direction. If you zoom in, we see that they exactly move by one, either to this side or to that side. That exactly measures K. And, 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 and that's basically our measurement of the topological uh, uh, index. If we couple the gauge field now to the inside of the system, of course, it's not coupled to the edge, and we don't see any flow. Okay. Uh, we, can, uh, we, can, we can do a, a control experiment to see that actually in, in a system that is not chiral, we don't have a spectral flow, uh, but uh, the system, the eigenstates just cross each other. We don't see a flow in the left direction or right direction. So that, that's a control experiment. That the spectrum comes back to itself after introduction of a, uh, of a pi, two pi phase, but there is no net flow. Okay. Uh, so again, all, all that was was linear, and that actually can be extended to to, to the uh, strongly interacting system. But let's uh, that's in the five five minutes that's left. Let's talk about the the fractional quantum Hall case. So the recipe to get fractional quantum Hall is very simple. Uh, we have we have to have some gauge field plus some interaction, hopefully K body interaction, and then we get fractional quantum Hall effect. So it's very easy theoretically to, to envisage. In particular, we have to have a Hamiltonian of this kind. So this is a Hamiltonian uh, that, that, uh, uh, that uh, we have uh, here, that now we have to, have a, uh, we have to add an on-site interaction such that uh, uh, if this interaction U is larger than J uh, in, in, the, in the photon language, meaning that if we are in the photon blockade regime, uh, then we expect the ground state of the system to be fractional quantum Hall effect. So this is very similar to the Hamiltonian uh, that uh, that we looked into a long time ago with our chair uh, <laughs> uh, 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 for for bosons and optical lattices. This is exactly the same, but there are some very fundamental uh, differences that I would highlight. So in the, the, from the Hamiltonian part is very similar. So let's, let's elaborate this a little bit more. Um, so we expect that for this Hamiltonian, when the feeling factor is one half and the magnetic field is uh, is weak, meaning that alpha is smaller than one, uh, then the ground state of the system can be characterized by Laughlin wave function, which is a uh, which is a many-body state. It's an entangled state. It's not a separable state. Okay. So now, uh, so that that's actually basically uh, 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 the, the the state uh, that that we uh, that we expect. Okay. So now, uh, I would like to highlight that there, there is an important uh, point here, uh, the feeling factor. We have this Laughlin state only when uh, the number of photons is fixed with respect to the number of magnetic flux. So if you want to implement it in a photonic system, then we have to uh, come up with a way to prepare this feeling factor at the right position. Okay? So before addressing that, uh, I would like to again highlight another uh, uh, Hamiltonian, another parent Hamiltonian, that can have topological uh, states, in particular Fafian states. So in 1991, this gentleman wrote a paper that if we have um, uh, this three-body interaction, uh, the three-body interaction uh, formally is something like this, that is uh, cubic, as you have the anharmonic lattice, that it's harmonic at the two level, but there is anharmonicity at the third level, then we expect to uh, have even more interesting state uh, uh, um, mm, as the ground state. And uh, we looked into it how we can make such three-body interaction in, in circuit QED systems. Okay, so uh, mm, let's assume that now we have the Hamiltonian that we can implement this Hamiltonian. How we can prepare the system? So the problem comes uh, from here. When we have a photonic system, you want to excite it with a coherent state. Uh, you and then it's strongly interacting. Some of it will be transmitted. Some of it will be reflected. But this is not going to uh, guarantee that you end up with the feeling factor that you would like. In particular, if you come up with one, two, three photon, then it would satisfy different feeling factors. And uh, you may end up with some Laughlin state at some uh, uh, 
uh, at some uh, photon number manifold, but in the other photon number manifold, it would be some uninteresting states. So how we can, how we can prepare it? There is a way to prepare the few photon uh, Laughlin state, like one or two, uh, that we worked out a while ago, but uh, uh, can we actually do uh, uh, something more uh, general? So uh, the idea is based on using the incompressibility of, uh, uh, of, of these many bodies. So the incompressibility is basically meaning that if uh, uh, the, the, the energy as a function of uh, number of particles should be asymmetric when we add particle or when we subtract particle, meaning that the chemical potential can be fixed at some point that can add a particle but not subtract a particle. Okay? So this is at, at the single uh, photon, at the single site level, this is just photon blockade. Meaning that you have some nonlinearity, you can add a single photon, but you cannot add a second photon. Or you can add two photons, but not one photon. One of them should be off present. Okay? So, uh, uh, we, we, uh, how much time I have? One, two minutes? With, with questions or without questions? Plus questions. With, with plus questions. Plus questions. Okay, okay, so I, I take some. Um, so, um, so on the one side, uh, uh, we ask this question: How we can prepare the system at the at the single uh, uh, at the single photon, knowing that we have this incompressibility, knowing that we have this photon blockade? Can we prepare it at at uh, uh, one photon level? So the uh, the idea is that we couple it to another uh, uh, qubit, uh, to another spin, which has a strong decay, and then uh, couple it parametrically such that. When two, uh, two, two uh, excitations are here, they go to the other excitation, meaning that, that, that the energy here uh, plus the energy here is equal to the energy uh, uh, of the parametric drive. So that uh, uh, two, two spins will go in this uh, state. There is a strong decay, so this will come down. Again, the pump would like to excite these states into, uh, uh, into the next uh, excited state, but no, it, it's no longer resonant because of this, uh, this detuning. So this state will be stabilized in, in, the, in the one photon fox state, okay? So that's a way actually to stabilize the system using its incompressibility. It's quite just incoherently pumping it, so nothing very strange. Now, one can actually generalize this case to the many-body case. Let's assume that this is the energy of the system as a, uh, as a function of number of uh, particles that I have in the size of the system, and, and, and this is the spectrum, okay? So now, uh, uh, for this uh, 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 fractional quantum Hall model that we looked into with, uh, with Elliot and, 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 and Steve Simon, uh, there is an interesting property that the spectrum is, uh, is gapless uh, up, to, uh, uh, up to some uh, filling factor. In particular, you can think of it that you have a, a lowest Landau level, and the lowest Landau level is, is degenerate. We can add particles one by one. They, they don't see each other. They are happily... Uh, accommodate themselves even though they're interacting, but then at some point they, they see each other and there is a gap and, and you cannot add more particles to this lowest Landau level. So I, I, cop, uh, I, I pump this uh, system one by one, I add photon one by one, I arrive here, then I can no longer pump it to the n plus one state. Now if I lose a photon, it will go back to the, to the state that has one uh, uh, less particle, one less photon, but then since the pump is always on, it will put it back. So it will push it until it uh, reaches some wall and then keep it uh, basically against the wall. So more, more formally, you can actually write it. And then if we do a simulation for a, for a small system, you see that regardless of where you start with five photon, four photon, three photon inside the system, you end up in the feeling factor uh, that, that is gapped. Okay? So there are, there are some other uh, schemes to, to make these uh, fractional quantum Hall states uh, by driving them. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, maybe Alexei will, will tell us a little bit about uh, the Rydberg idea. From he's nodding his head. Uh, <laughs> uh, so I would like to summarize. Uh, so in the first part, we, will, uh, we looked at how we can synthesize this gauge field and how we can look at the uh, robustness of these edge states in the non-interacting regime how we can uh, measure this topological invariance, and, and how we can uh, uh, state this many body states of uh, photons. I skipped the outlook. Uh, and, and I would like to acknowledge uh, um, all the people who were in, in involved in, uh, in, the, in the work that I presented. 
in particular for the measurement of, uh, uh, of this um, topological invariance, uh, Sunil Mittal, Siram Ganeshan, Jay Fan, and Apple Hassan Wazi, and in particular Sunil did the experiment, and, and, and Shiram basically did uh, all the nice uh, uh, Jan Simon uh, formal uh, Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much. We have time for one or two questions or something. Yes? Uh, what's the magnitude of the uh, equivalent magnetic field you have? Hmm. Uh, I think, and I don't want to say something wrong.